Um, so hello everyone. Thank you all for joining today's workshop. My name is Katsi and I'm joining you all from the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. I'm currently a research assistant at the UBC Addictions and Concurrent Disorders Research Group and I will be your moderator for today's session. So once again, it's with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Schaub who will be presenting on Can, Re can Reduce. Um, and before we get started, as for Dr. Shab's suggestion, we'd love to hear brief introductions from everyone joining us today. Feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat, and then we'll get started. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. All right, Dr. Shabi of the floor. So now it's no more alcohol, it's cannabis use. So can reduce studies. It's about controlled cannabis use for most of the participants that we recruited, but of course there were also others. Um, I will come back to this later. Thanks to my team. And I will talk to you a bit about uh, and definitions. And for those that uh, followed just my talk before, uh, I will skip that a bit, uh, but go straightly to this can reduce studies. So the can reduce 1.0. This is about this guidance via chat counseling. So it's really guided announcement. While this recent study can reduce 2.0 was about this e-coach system. So I really give a more of an insight what this e-coach system can be and what it means in, in practice also. And then give you a short introduction to the current uh, can you use mindfulness study that we are uh, conducting and where we really want to call to um, pair these e-coach functions uh, in bed, embedded in mindfulness coach system versus cognitive behavioral uh, e-coach system. And with your time or no more questions, we also can have some demonstrations of some of the e-coaches. Again, a little bit some um, information on the terms and acronyms. And a mobile-based intervention stands for, and also for this can reduce studies, the all, most of them were guided self-help. So not blended, but guided. So e-coach system supported or professional counseling as in the first can reduce study. See one advantage is uh, 10 years ago when I did not do this kind of research, but was uh, in practice and had uh, lots of cannabis uh, use disorder patients. They were of course rather young and so on and so forth. But after maybe one a year I realized um, they we are not talking about the same when they were talking about using one joint. So we really had to introduce these kind of measures. Uh, and it was difficult to explain in, in, in while you were talking and so on. So we started really having pictures showing, oh, this is my standard joint that you usually are preparing. And of course, you can do a, another kind of a, a consumption diary. In this latest meta-analysis that uh, uh, Nico uh, and I were uh, publishing, uh, published in drug and alcohol dependency, uh, not so good. So they were compared to the alcohol use disorder field with internet and mobile based intervention. The effects were not sometimes zero almost. There were also some negative. So where the intervention group was worse than the control group. So there, there were quite some mixed results so far. And also we saw in this meta-analysis, the effects were mainly in the most of the study not maintained at longer time. However, if you look at the latest culture uh, review or meta-analysis for face-to-face -face therapy in cannabis users, they did not show also longer term effects either there. Uh, those combining cognitive behavioral therapy with motivation interviewing show, um, as you see, there were not so many compares, but they showed higher effect size then this kind of a very brief one-time space session interventions with this normalized, uh, brief normalized personalized feedback. 
And the main limitation we actually uh, discovered, there was really some mixed outcome measures. Uh, there is no core outcome set. There, is, uh, there are some uh, similarities to the audit in the outcome field. The Q did it's called for cannabis use disorder in identification test. However, uh, there, were, there are more or less four versions now of this QDIT, and some all these studies uh, did not use the same like the newer studies for many reasons. And there were the other main limitation was that there were no long term follow ups in most of these cannabis reduction studies. So, this is the cannabis one study that we finished in 2018. And the question was what effects has professional chat based guidance? In addition to cognitive behavioral therapy, online self-help in the reduction um, of cannabis use and of course on intervention adherence. And we recruited these, uh, so to say, cannabis misuses, misuses from the general population in Switzerland. See, that was uh, an older technology in 2012 when we programmed it. But mainly there were similar modules like in the alcohol interventions, but uh, aiming at the reduction of cannabis use. Also, big behavioral activation, as we realized that many were also less, some had 20% uh, hate uh, in the screening positive, uh, screening for ADHD, for instance. Uh, and there was this on the right side, this small chat window where they couldn't really have some chat points with, with some uh, counselors. And, inter and interactions, real-time interactions. You see how this consumption diary looks like. So this is kind of a under joint that someone chose to participate in. And there was this progress graph. And uh, here we are already in the results. What was uh, different to the alcohol field, uh, mainly male, so about uh, Eighty percent, and as you can see, uh, the dark blue were for cannabis use, and the yeah, uh, other blue color was from this ACT Info. And ACT Info is actually the Swiss outpatient treatment monitoring statistics. You see, there were a bit more female participants. Um, it did not come become significant in the cannabis use so online study. Regarding age distribution. Uh, Actually, uh, people in Canada were a bit older, but was surprisingly to us, and this was really the first study in cannabis use that recruited from the general population, um, they were using much more cannabis than those entering outpatient treatment settings. And you see, really much more. So we had 71% daily users, really daily users, uh, talking about three, four standard joints a day versus 41% in this outpatient treatment monitoring statistics. Um, however, we had some considerable um, adherence problems. You see, um, this is filling out the cannabis diary and we strongly recommend this to the participants that in week one, there were only 40% around uh, filling out and there was not really a big difference for the self-help this chat in dark blue versus the other blue color um, without chat, so self-help only. But in the end, over the six weeks, the chat condition, the professional uh, chat offer became significant regarding adherence. Here are the modules, you see a very similar picture, but not really more module complete, completion. And a really few really already uh, in the very beginning of the modules, already the second week, we had only 50% starting with the second module. However, regarding effectiveness, and this is change in cannabis use days, uh, intention to treat analysis, we had some small effects for chat group versus the waiting list control group and chat versus self-help. So chat was a bit better, as you can see. So, but, you see, we had really this was the first time we had several questions, of course. Could self help only be better done? And from those allocated to this chat condition, really self help plus this chat offer. So we really wrote them, hey, and counselor, when would you have time? I made some uh, suggestions for three appointments each time. 
uh, only 25 actually managed to have these sessions. So really few, only a quarter. The subgroup analysis uh, really uh, were interesting was only knowing that there is a chat counselor without really actually making it to these chat sessions uh, already increased effectiveness compared to the condition where participants were clear that they have not this uh, chat offer. So also only knowing it makes a difference. But of course, as I said already, depression, anxiety, comorbidity has high, so we really had to address this more. And we were, had a few that actually, although we were aiming at, at cannabis use reduction, started at week zero and really wanted in the first week to reduce to zero, although they continued a lot. So we had to do something like those aiming at, at this abstinence goal that they really receive a different kind of modular recommendation, for instance. So we designed this cannabis 2.0, which is adherence focused guidance, semi-automated ecosystem. And there we wanted to see if it makes a difference, if you really have, it makes a difference if you really have a, an e-code that is visible as a person, or if you have just a, a can reduce team, where you have no uh, really pictures, you have no movies, and so on, in the beginning of modules. Otherwise, the same question. You see, it was an update in 2016. And uh, this is also the starting page. It looks a bit funny and fancy, of course, because it's also for cannabis users and the general population. It was adaptive also to smartphone phone for the first time. And here's the version that we had uh, later on in, in Austria. This was a female e-coach, uh, Lena, and she was really coming in every module saying, hello again, uh, it's me. Welcome to the second or third module. Today we are learning and we're going through or making also some motivational interviewing style. For some, it's important to reduce more, for some, it's difficult to reduce. However, uh, just have a try this kind of <laughs> location. This is the dashboard uh, where you can email, and this is this kind of uh, personalized message that they will, she, this, uh, Lena will write back to the participants. Uh, actually, this consumption diary with the targets in, in yellow and green and in red to really actually consume cannabis. This is the module overview, translated this time uh, in English for you. And we also had this idea of this um, voice of companion. So there were some fictive uh, companions, but of course these were stories from our face-to-face -face treatments for combining some information and ideas for and stories of patients. And But we asked participants to choose one story and as you can see, there were quite uh, a lot of possibilities to really have cultural differences, uh, uh, background stories. So for instance, uh, Lisa was a, a student and she had to learn for exams, while Boyan was a gay um, immigrant and, and really likes to smoke before having sex with his partner. So we really had some background stories coming, really trying to cover different kinds of participants, which we knew uh, from other studies, from face-to-face -to -face treatment, that these typical uh, typical profiles may, might emerge. What happened to the results? They actually, adherence went up. So it was better, better much better, this e-coach system, to offering chat counseling with a chat window by professional chat counselor. So really psychotherapists, there were some psychiatrists offering, we were working together and they were really looking forward and, and this is, you can see this e coach system worked better. And the effects also went up and considerably up. You see we were in the medium effect size range. So in green, it's internet as usual, waiting list control group. So because there are some other offers, <laughs> some told us in, in the follow-up interviews, well, we went to this uh, quick shit tool from Germany when we saw that we ended up in the waiting list control group with your study. And so on. of course this happened when you, happens when you recruit from the general population, but still you see really large effects. So they really, uh, from 
uh, went down from about 25 cannabis use days in the past 30 days down to about 15 days. Okay, and this was quite similar and a bit better in the uh, uh, yellow group. And this was this uh, anonymous study team. ST is study team, and SP stands for social present. So really, it's the coach with these um, uh, movies. Regarding secondary outcomes, we had similar results for the reduction of cannabis dependent severity and the reduction, and this was interesting for general anxiety symptoms. So we better could reduce also general anxiety symptoms in the active intervention groups. Depression symptoms, on the other hand, decreased in all three groups, also, also in the waiting list, uh, internet as usual, control group. Same was true. Um, now, for PTSD symptoms, they actually increased when they were reducing cannabis, and this was the case for all three groups. And participants, this was a separate paper uh, with ADHD symptoms, and you see that 34% for screening positive in this ADHD screener had no disadvantages in participation and showed actually similar effects than those uh, that were not screening positive in this questionnaire despite their much more higher uh, use of cannabis and also higher use of illicit drugs. That's quite a good uh, message. This is the Spanish version. Maybe we have time to look at it because, to look to it because uh, this is really an optimal version of an e-coach profile. You can have a look at this, it's canadus.es for España, if you have time to, to, to look at it once. And we are now starting with canyonuse.ca, actually. I uh, want to do a study here in, in Canada also. So um, this brings me to the actual now study we are conducting. Uh, the, the study protocol paper is submitted and it's about mindfulness. So our research questions were, what effect has this usual, what I just showed, the adherent-focused semi-automated e-coach system, but based on mindfulness-based therapy approaches, in comparison to a waiting list control group condition, in cannabis misuse of recruited from the general population, and also in a cognitive behavioral therapy versus mindfulness-based therapy intervention. And the basic, uh, the first idea was, uh, maybe we, they are, we are not doing better with this mindfulness approach, but maybe we are reaching different uh, populations that you, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy sometimes is really um, thought provoking, I would say, and you really have to think uh, a lot. And, and maybe it's sometimes for some people having a bit too much cannabis consume at the same time, um, too, um, too uh, complicated. So this is now based on this uh, Drupal 9. So it's really the, the latest option. You see, it looks a bit ben different. And we actually had um, now uh, not really visible persons, so picture of real persons. I just told you, tell you why. These are the pro, uh, the modules. But we have these two different e coach so mindfulness coach. So you can his listen to him is Marty or Anna, uh, is a female, um, the background, how they come to mindfulness and they will be really, you can choose the better voice that you really think uh, you are favored with. And then the exercises on each module uh, will be um, spoken by them. And you can download it, of course, to your smartphone, you can hear it directly. And you see, I don't, you don't need to see everything, but you see there were about um, nine different exercises and the, the different for, for male and female, and also sometimes of different lengths, because the idea is maybe the first two or three times you need a rather longer exercise. And then if you have exercise, exercise a lot, then, then you can probably use also a very brief one, for instance, one in the train with your headphone and so on. Yes, that's it for the moment. I hope you have some questions. 
some references and also the links to the website. So if you might, uh, uh, you can also activate your camera. <laughs> you don't need to. You can also write in the chat if you have some questions, please. Yes, I definitely encourage everyone to turn on their cameras if they're comfortable with doing so. Um, but before we dive into our discussion, I just wanted to thank Dr. Shah for just such an insightful presentation. Personally, I found it so inspiring to see how your work has been able to touch so many lives. And just right before we get into our discussion, I just wanted to share a gentle reminder to please send any questions you have through Whova on the Whova platform. You should see a ask a question button in the bottom right hand right hand corner of your screen. However, if you prefer to just raise your hand or um, unmute your mics in Zoom, that works as well. Um, and I see that we already have a question from Jing Lian. Um, feel free to unmute yourself. It's very resourceful and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, um, from your study, uh, there was a point saying the PTSD symptoms increase in all three groups. Uh, do you mind to just kind of like elaborate a little bit? That was kind of, that surprised me. A Surprising. Lot. <laughs> well, I could imagine that some people jump on that. <laughs> Did you read the uh, Nature uh, editorial? Uh, Never fear, cannabinoids are here. <laughs> um, well, there are some development, pharmaceutical development treatment that they try to get some um, substances out of cannabis. Of course, not only smoking cannabis, but for instance, cannabidiol is uh, one of the target substances to really try to have some new um, medication uh, approaches also for PTSD symptom reduction. And probably this reflects it a bit. So um, I, we unfortunately did not ask people uh, had the, about the content of the cannabis, only very uh, vague. <clears throat> and uh, for instance, it could be that if you smoke uh, rather uh, uh, outdoor cannabis on lo with low THC uh, concentration but higher CBD concentration, did, this might probably reduce some of the common uh, PTSD symptoms. And if you reduce this cannabis, this might go up. And of interesting uh, depression went down at the same time. <laughs> yeah. However, what th that's why I'm a bit also interpreting, um, and only about 20% uh, actually were positive on this PTSD screening instrument here. And it's not really not a diagnosis. So not, I, I would not, we should do this kind of e coach intervention. Uh, it's never, you should never do really diagnosis, but but it's about screening instruments. So uh, yes, it might be also a kind of a uh, methodological problem, but rather not, I, I would be in favor of really cannabis in those having PTSD, uh, you should be a bit uh, cautious about uh, particularly reducing from one day to the other, all the cannabis. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you so much, Dr. Shab, for addressing that question. I have another question from Huva over here. Um, so in what ways were mindfulness techniques integrated into the most recent version of Can Reduce? Well, um, from the very beginning. <laughs> so it's really about they are starting the program and then they are introduced to the program and there are these two uh, different coaches mindfulness-based coaches, and you can choose one. It's always important to choose in these programs too. Uh, sometimes you, but you, if the people are really depressed, it's important that they really are taken by their hand and you go step by step through the modules, but uh, particularly cannabis users, they, they need some, some fun, having some um, choices, having some, oh, I like the man better than the woman, the woman, uh, the, the voice is a bit sounds like an older lady, so I'm taking water. So these kind of things, and and there they also already talk about their experiences and why they are now practicing 
uh, on a daily basis uh, mindfulness based trainings uh, just for stress reduction, not, not for particularly for cannabis use. Okay. I step there are also introduced on the topic mindfulness, what is meant by it. There are some movies explaining about. Um, about your body and, and really go away of your problems and really these basic uh, concepts are first introduced and then they follow the, the first the body experience you really go uh, with perceptions with the body and then it gets com more and more complicated and it's really about uh, and there are also some uh, um, exercises that are repeatedly done specifically this this uh, getting away of this craving, thinking, I want to consume cannabis. This is one that is recommended really to practice if possible on, uh, on daily basis and beginning until you still the craving problems. And of course, they are also re uh, recommended to reduce cannabis. Yes. Perfect, thank you so much for the answer, Dr. Shaw. I will now pass it off to Darshan, who has a question over here on Zoom. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, quite an interesting presentation. I'm particularly impressed by the huge sample size, uh, which was there. Uh, my question is: uh, Was there uh, what was the dropout rate overall uh, when you moved from uh, can reduce one, two, three? Did you see that progressively the dropout rate decreased, or actually the dropout increased? That is one thing. And uh, the dropout was it different from uh, the treatment as usual group and uh, uh, the ones on ones you were, who were actually part of intervention? Uh, yes, so we usually have about um, uh, one, one thing is that we ask them to fill out the consumption diary on, 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 a, on a weekly basis. And uh, some people are going through the modules but are not filling out the consumption diary. And the opposite around is also possible. <laughs> so you may have to be a bit careful regarding this. But usually we lose about 50% uh, now in the latest, in the Canadians 2 study, 50% after four weeks. But many of them completed within these four weeks, uh, uh, six or seven modules that were uh, meant to complete, being complete after eight weeks, for instance. Yes. Another issue is how, uh, how you follow up these people. So we actually, <laughs> in, within the study, because we really want, uh, we, we are asking them in the, in the study already, and we will be calling you in, in uh, uh, three months follow up and, and be prepared. You will receive a, a WhatsApp message to your smartphone. And then we are asking you when you would be ready to, to fill it out online. And if they don't do, we are asking them to, 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 uh, to pick up the phone. And, and it's really a step stepwise procedure, but still we are uh, reaching about, uh, uh, Forty percent in the cannabis users, sometimes even less. In in the alcohol depression trial, we had about sixty percent, seventy percent. So it really depends a bit on the participants. Actually, the worst were uh, the cocaine misusers, that we had really 20, 15, 20 percent. So we this was really no no more uh, feasible to really make some um, sophisticated analysis in, in the cocaine trial. But also in practice, the cooking users are really those that come in really in need, and, but they leave after two weeks and <laughs> usually they come, don't come back and go to different treatment or, or using again. So, so, yes, so this reflects, these dropouts reflect a bit also the dropouts you see in face to face treatment. But of course, these people are from the general population. Many of them have never been in treatment, in any form of treatment for depression, ADHD. We also ask for treat discretion. And so they're really uh, treatment naive, naive people. Mm -hmm. So this explains it maybe a bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, now I will move on to our next question, which is from Huva. This is from Robert Colonna. He asks, were the interventions available or optimized for mobile devices or desktop use? Yes, that's an easy question. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, um, can you use 1.0 was only uh, internet based 
and, and we started there to improve it a bit for the first mobile phone. So this was in 2014, um, but now the, the latest 2.0, 2 I think mindfulness is also for tablets. So they are adoptive depending on the, on the, on the device the participants are using. And of course it looks a little bit different, but it's really optimized also for, for smartphone and tablets is one of the advantages of this uh, Drupal uh, system we have. And it's actually open access software, so it's not, not uh, commercial. Questions? Perfect, thank you, Dr. Schaub. Uh, now I will pass it off to Inzi. My apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. Thank you, thank you. Hey, this is Inzi, thank you so much. And uh, dear Michael, thank you so much for uh, for this uh, great evening and event. Uh, I'm so impressed as always. And uh, congratulations for Canradius one, two, and three. I'd like to uh, ask something about Canradius uh, three point uh, oh. Um, for example, is it possible to observe the frequency of uh, Michael's techniques, which one uh, the partners uh, have chosen? Uh, by the uh, admin or by the researcher on the program? Yes, um, it's difficult actually because we expect that some are downloading it, just the, the, the audio file to, to somewhere else, for instance, and are practicing, the, for instance, uh, on the iPods while they are, are choking or I don't know. <laughs> We're not recommending this, but it's, uh, these kind of things happen. Uh, the only thing we are doing is uh, that we actually uh, ask participants at each follow-up how many times did they practice, and uh, they those that are answering that that we try to find out which kind of, of exercises they most like. For instance, however, um, we also, of course, in all these three studies, we had some piloting uh, um, phases, and they were always piloted with real participants, and sometimes participants. No, every time these participants in front of a computer also and their smartphone with a uh, therapist next to them. <laughs> so they really could go through it, they eat and, and so and Yes, and, and we will see how this works with this mindfulness based approach. It's, it's really a new way, I don't know. Maybe yes. the same happens with the, with the e-coach uh, issue where we wanted to show actually that the movies and these nice e-coach things are better than just having a kind of used team <laughs> of professionals mm -hmm. background. Uh, well, this happens sometimes. So could, could I uh, could I ask a, a following question, a related question? Yes. If it's mm -hmm. okay. um, so uh, what do you think uh, about the, uh, what kind of mindfulness uh, practices are they interested in? Um, some of them can be uh, physical, some of them uh, can be uh, thinking or uh, imagining. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, mindfulness uh, techniques yes, are there they interested are, yeah, in? There are different ones. Uh, one, one is really this body scan. This is the, the, the one in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Check myself. Yes, uh, breathing meditation is the first. The second one is body scan. The third one is uh, uh, riding on the wave. So it's really about the craving that comes and goes. And there is a mountain meditation. So this is really in sitting. So my exercise in sitting. So really having this free mind. Um, there, and then is the fifth exercise is this uh, supper. Um, a sober exercise, which is really about stress and risk situations, the moments where craving appears. And this is one is recommended to really repeat uh, on a week, really as, as many times as it is needed. Um, then we have uh, walking meditation. Actually, there it is, yes. <laughs> so they have to choose a, a, a place where they can. Uh, do 10 to 20 steps through and backs and really go 
uh, mindfulness walking. The eighth meditation is about um, um, really being uh, mindful regarding um, uh, this, this kind of grooming and really having these uh, thought uh, circles regarding drugs or stress or whatever. And uh, the end and is about um, um, really having being peaceful with, with yourself and your environment. So this kind of, of it has to be done you know, on a chair or on a, a pillow. <laughs> so there, there are really some really concrete uh, um, exact uh, introductions and, and options doing this, these exercises. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Shab. Now I'll pass it off to Robert. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Shab. A great presentation. Um, just quick question. Um, what, what was the uh, theoretical model or, or framework you mentioned that informed the intervention? I, I think you mentioned it was, it was either cognitive behavioral therapy or motivational interviewing. Yes, we started by this in the first study. <laughs> then we realized we had uh, um, really 40% um, were moderately depressed. And of this 40, half of them were really a uh, major depression in the screen. <laughs> so we really thought, oh, we have to do something about it. So we introduced also cognitive behavioral therapy for depression, um, behavioral activation exercises, um, um, the, the good night joint exercises. We realized that for many, it was difficult to stop using the last joint of the day before they go to sleep. So we introduced some uh, uh, um, um, information about how cannabis affects you, their sleep and, and to find different um, options than smoking cannabis, um, for instance, brewing an iced tea instead of uh, just having this ritual um, before they go to bed. So uh, a tranquilizing tea, let's say. Uh, then, uh, we had also, um, we, not, we did, actually, we did not address uh, ADHD symptoms directly. So th that was rather uh, to just to see if th uh, those screening positive are, are different in, in their, particularly in their uh, adherence uh, regarding the models. And motivational interview and CBT, of course, for cannabis use reduction. Okay, thank you. Um, so. Uh, just a follow-up question then what uh extent was like motivational interviewing like used for these reasons i know you mentioned it was using the alcohol intervention mm -hmm. yeah i mean we, we had a different study where we had this um uh kind of we tried more different kinds of motiva motivation interviewing versus personalized feedback versus no information for the in the recruitment for a, a cannabis group therapy face-to-face -face group therapy and it turned to, uh, out that there were not much di differences between the group, actually, um, unfortunately, uh, for the PhD student. But um, what we actually realized is uh, motivational interviewing, uh, really realized online to develop it is quite an issue. <laughs> so it, there are really some uh, basic uh, things that are not working uh, for. for if it's the self-help model, so it really needs to be blended. Uh, but what we are usually doing is this uh, pro and contra um, balance in the beginning, that it's so thought-provoking, and, and then we, we reach to CPT is, is this um, magical question. Imagine you wake up once in the morning after really having these pros and cons and thinking about it. Should I or should I not reduce or stop even? Imagine that you wake up one morning and everything is, the problem is cannabis is gone. You no more feel depressed or have slept well. Uh, what be the, the, the first issue that you would uh, realize that it's really true? And, and then this kind of Imagine how the situation could be without it and so all these problems. So, and this is sort of a kind of solution based. And then you go this, to CBT. 
Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, and then just last really quick follow up. Um, I, I think in the earlier question, you mentioned that it's a non commercial or open access. Does that mean it's available for other researchers to use like this intervention? Yes, sure. Uh -huh. We also wanted to conduct now an RCT in Canada, actually, and there is a canadaUse.ca, <laughs> but it's not perfect at the moment. We, we are piloting, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. And you really have time and want to see a good and a nice e-coach, you need to go to the Spanish version. I was really surprised. <laughs> it's, it's actually an actor, it's not a, this woman, it's not a, a, a therapist or something like this. Uh, and she does really well this this kind of motivational interviewing style that that that, uh, that uh, also has a notice for for Robert now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll I'll take a look. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Shaw, for addressing that question and your audience today for just the great amount of engagement. I love how everyone's raising their hand and muting their mics. And with that being said, I'll pass it off to Jing for our next question. Yes, thank you for engagement. Um, so, thank you. So, I'm just curious. Um, do you mind to elaborate, like the section of your evolutionary research studies, like the interaction part? Because I noticed that you mentioned there is this chat session uh, with different psychologists or psychiatrists. The first I'm just wondering, like, study, yeah? you know, mm -hmm. yeah, like what's the detail of that? Or if there's any, like, say, um, like a community building or interaction within the group, like with participant, you know, those community, like, I'm just curious, like, uh, yeah, that's interesting. more details mm -hmm. about <laughs> your research. Actually, because the connection yeah. is kind of important, right, with uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a very interesting study. Actually, when we started, we always thought we, we need this kind of a, a discussion panel, for instance, that the participants can really react and interact with each other. And, and this kind, of course, this can also be guided, this, this discussion panels. And, but uh, people don't like it in, in Europe, or at least in France. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, actually, we had a similar study on alcohol use reduction. Uh, in the Netherlands, and there the people liked it. They all interacted, <laughs> and we, we started this once uh, in alcohol and also once in uh, for cannabis use, but they just did not fill out. So they have really their own uh, um, chat groups, their own uh, WhatsApp groups, or Facebook. By that time, of course, uh, there was no way. But I think it's really a cultural issue, so it can be much different so probably in, in Canada this is working much better with, with this uh, with this uh, discussion groups and, and everything so, so really try it out <laughs> yeah and this was also by the way a reason why we started with these personal companion profiles that I showed to you so uh, because we, we thought well if they don't use this they, somehow they have to uh, have uh, the feeling of oh I'm coming back and there is this uh, like this at least fictive person there again and this is e coach <laughs> so because we, we know from studies this is really important to, that they feel a bit like not not home but a feel of uh, uh, I know this place and I'm, I'm, I'm now in the third week oh I actually I'm I'm struggling a bit but ah uh, uh, there is this person. <laughs> They did not like these discussion forums and interaction with so others. Really not. That's, I don't know. I, I think it's a cultural issue. It can be much different in different countries. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you for addressing that question. The next one I have is from Huva. So, which modules in CanReduce were the most popular, and what do you think drove users to utilize these modules the most? Um, um, well, uh, you must admit we took, <laughs> when we started and we learned how many drop out in the very beginning, we started to really group the, what we call core modules. So really a uh, motivation interview in the first, then it must be a, uh, a module on, about um, risky situation, a module about craving reduction. And, and yes, and that's it more, or, and the one on, on the, uh, what happens if you if you relapse or slip on your way to to uh, cannabis use to your doctor? These were the four core modules, 
uh, more or less the core uh, modules you usually have in therapy, face-to-face -face for cognitive behavioral therapy. And of course, we had this as the first ones with the idea that participants go at least through these four modes. <laughs> yes. And the other four, um, so my, in this cannabis use, then we have, we have uh, cannabis one, we had this four additional modules, so module five to, to eight, they called as optional modules. So if you come to all these four, you can also uh, jump to one of the, of the other modules. Yes. And I think I missed now something of uh, some part of the question. Can, can you help me, Cathy? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the first half of the, of the question was which modules were the most popular, and the second half is why do you think um, what what drove users rather to utilize these modules the most? I think I'll get the, 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 the last part. Can you repeat, please? Sorry. Um, what drove users to use these modules the most? Ah, uh -huh, okay, yes. Um, yes, there, there is another story. <laughs> uh, you really um, need to let them choose a bit. So we we really recommend them to go by this uh, step by step in, in this order but if they feel a need and to jump in a different module because they are in a situation where another module could be more important to them they should do it so that's what we are telling and this is to the participants and they like this idea um, specifically the cannabis users <laughs> it's different for alcohol and depression that you have to take more the user by the hand and guide them module by module. For and actually, in, in internet interventions for alcohol, uh, for depression reduction or anxiety reduction, it's really, really step by step taking them in the hand at the hand. And for cannabis users, they need to choose. Yeah. We, we have recommendations, and then they can also choose if they are in a different situation where they think one module could be better for the moment. And yeah. Different. <laughs> and we learned this already in the piloting and also got the feedback in, 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 from the studies itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Shav. And I see we have another hand raised here over in Zoom. Jane, you have the floor. So um, is there any measurement in place that you can ensure like they have some kind of accountability? to go through the modules in your research? Yes, the, we have a lock. So they, every time, each time they log in and do something, we, we have this kind of lock, time lock. So it says on yesterday, they logged in at uh, five o'clock and they looked half of the module five and jumped to the module seven. So we have this lock. So, mm -hmm. so also I the guess system and, and it is important for my other point of view because the system remembers where they left. So if they go back, they can just continue at this at that module at that at this page where they left last time. So that's why uh, we have this also included. Mm -hmm. So the system didn't have any kind of reminder like, okay, hey, listen, like you miss one day, mm -hmm. you didn't look yes. at any module. We have this, of <laughs> course. Uh, Oh, it was okay. uh, email based in the very beginning. Um, and now it's also when we go more to Drupal 9, it's, 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 it looks like a bit like an app on the smartphone. So we can, you can press the button and when you open it, 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 uh, it, it sends you also some pitching uh, messages. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is important. We always thought um, we are sending them too much, but actually they never complained. <laughs> So if you know, even if they, you send them four messages weekly, uh, nobody can blame. So people are using these reminders or not. So maybe it's, it's ourselves. We receive 15 emails a day and then we really read step by step and the other five we are deleting immediately. So this really is not so a problem sending these reminders. We don't have to be uh, afraid of sending too many uh, messages. Or, mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you so much. So the next question I have over here, over here is quite long. So I'm gonna try my best to split it up into some parts. So could you elaborate more on the purpose of the voice of the companion section of the platform? 
Um, and how will you ensure that users from very diverse backgrounds feel connected and empowered to use it? How to ensure it? Yeah, that's difficult. We just <laughs> so tell them in the very beginning, um, we have this option that there are companions and have a look at it. They are first of all, in the first module, they are on introducing their story. So we really go to all of them and, and see which one uh, could be more probably the one you like going through this intervention. Of course, there is also always the option to switch to another one so in each module. That, that's important. So it's really a bit of, um, well, also a bit playing around for some people. So maybe it's, it's, it's interesting to see what, what could be with myself in 10 years when, when I have children already and still smoking. So there is, for instance, a story like this. But of course, uh, ensuring, um, we just uh, know that from the, our questions that the people really liked this kind. Uh, of, of companions, although they really know from the very beginning that they are they are they are not real persons. They are persons uh, from several stories mixed up, and, and from from user stories, from from therapist therapeutic sessions, and, and therapies progress. So we we not hundred percent sure. Uh, probably we have missed some profiles that are could be more important to add and yes but we use them these profiles also very much when you go for instance in uh, when you have this can we use .ca trial in Canada of course there will be other profiles there will be much more about uh, black and white people uh, issues there will be much more uh, so racial uh, race issues than we have here in, in, in Europe, for instance, because we know this is more important is to really uh, that people feel addressed and there is not just this white uh, therapist telling all the troops, of course. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Shav. The next question I have is from Puva. So what are the most notable aspects of Can Reduce that differentiate it from other web-based self-help interventions? Uh, yes, I think really this, uh, when we started with this adherence focused guidance, so really this e coach system, uh, this made really the difference. So that really we were surprised by ourselves and we really had a lot of people <laughs> recruited. So it's really clearly, it's really, um, um, really on a medium effectiveness, effect size we, we reached. So it's, um, for instance, when there was a uh, uh, almost at the same time, uh, RCT conducted in Germany for face-to-face -face outpatient treatment. And they had lower effect size, actually, as we reached in our study. And of course, people went there more to the intervention. Um, people uh, probably did not use that much cannabis as those who recruited online, actually. It was still, it's always, it was always the case, by the way, not only in the first uh, cannabis study, yes. So I think this really made the difference and, and can you, cannabis users really like this, this adherence focus guidance, this e-coach system, probably more than outdoor users because maybe they really want to do it a bit by their own because they are really different people with, with different substance use disorders looking for other contacts and to still have a, a kind of a, a distance to a therapist. They don't like talking to therapists. So very much. Right, thank you so much. Um, I hope this answers a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. You did a wonderful job explaining that, Dr. Shab. I will now pass it off to Robert for our next question. Can you just uh, go over the recruitment strategy again? I'm just curious how people were recruited and how there's such like a large sample. Uh, so you want to see first the recruitment slide or? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me try. And I'm tr trying to tell you a bit how we do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, for instance, in the study. Oh, no, I have not uh, included this in the presentation. Okay. Okay, I see. 
but there were um, in Kennedy's 1.0, there were 311 all in total. In 2.0, there were much more. Let me check. 554, yes, divided to three groups. How we manage this? Well, what works best, <laughs> of course, is when we have uh, really some mass media presence. So we have this uh, commuter uh, newspaper that you can, can collect for free in trains, for instance. Um, we had sometimes the possibility that there was a kind really of a, an article saying what we are doing, where we are from, what this tool is for, really half a page. And this, of course, helped because this is, was available almost on all train stations in Switzerland. This is maybe the best way, but of course, you cannot do it this on a, on a weekly basis. What, what is important that you have these kind of boosters, that's, so to say, of, for the recruitment. And, but what it also has to be in parallel is this continuous uh, recruitment of participants in need. So you have this kind, and therefore we use this uh, Google advertisement. So uh, if people are looking online for this cannabis, uh, uh, different uh, uh, cannabis groups or different cannabis, uh, uh, how do you say, if it's indoor or outdoor, or if it's more Sentinella or these kind of questions in Google, they, they will find one day or another when they are surfing somewhere in the internet, this advertisement, hey, there is this kind of new study that, that, that was, uh, that is what I mean by, by Google advertisement. And why is it important? Be because you have more than motivated ones, the one really looking for this kind of information from one day to another, where if you do this kind of recruitment by Google advertisement, and these other uh, commuter newspaper or sometimes also TV uh, broadcasting uh, um, reports, um, there you have a lot of just uh, people just having a look on the intervention and then kind of pass away. So, <laughs> so an optimum is to have sometimes the, the boosters and, and, and in the background this, this frequent recruitment. Perfect. Perfect. Quite well also for for instance, for uh, people with gambling disorders, uh, we have a trial where it was really difficult to recruit them, especially by, by during the COVID crisis where all the casinos <laughs> closed and so on. Uh, and there, this uh, online uh, recruitment by this Google advertiser worked very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Schaub, for such thoughtful answers. Seeing as it is now 1216, I just wanted to conclude our discussion period for this workshop. And on behalf of the UBC Addictions and Concurrent Disorders Research Group, I just wanted to thank Dr. Schaub and our audience for joining us today. It was so nice to see so many people ask questions and just be so engaged and have great ongoing back and forth discussion. I hope to see you all at our next section. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you for a really active participation. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.